Good morning, physics students, and welcome to another episode of Finzix. It's Mr. Finn coming at you again from Neighborly Northville. Hope you guys are having a great day today. I'm going to be brief today. I know I mentioned in the previous episode that I was going to go into com compound circuits, but I'm going to hold off that for one day because today I actually have a lab ready for you to walk you through a simulation. I'm going to show you how that simulation works. Um, and I have that, uh, it's already available by now, but you can download that, uh, walk through the simulation, kind of get an idea for what's going on, and then um, upload it back to classroom. So it's going to take a little bit to do that. So I'm going to go brief today, and I'm just going to walk you through one evaluation of a parallel circuit, start to finish, evaluating a bunch of different items on the parallel circuit. So we're going to do that. Then I'll show you the simulation, and then I'll give you guys the chance to work today. There will be a parallel Google form. Uh, it's either out today or it's out, I think it's out today or tomorrow. So check for that on Classroom and complete that as well. All right? Okay, guys, let's get right to it then. Okay, guys, here's our parallel circuit. So you can see I have three resistors all in parallel. We know it's parallel because we have multiple paths which current is going. How does it value there's only one path? If it gets to point A, it can split. It can go this way through R1, down this way through R2, or even down this way through R3. And once you get to the back of these bulbs, basically point B is the same for all the bulbs. Now, what I've drawn up here is some items that we want to find or evaluate by looking at this circuit. Now, I wrote these things in order of how we should find them, according to the rules on page 552. So it should be a little easier for you, at least until you get to compound circuits. Okay, guys, let's check it out. Current through resistor 1. You can see we have a 1.5 volt supply and the resistor 1's value. Now, if you'll remember, parallel circuits, the first thing we were going to do after recognizing that it was a parallel circuit is we were going to apply Ohm's law individually to each branch. Therefore, 1.5 volt divided by 2 ohms. And that's going to give us 0.75 amps. So 2 ohm down the line. volts divided by 6 ohms because that's resistor 2. And it's the same idea of applying ohms law individually. So 1.5 divided by 6 is 0.25 amps. Lastly, 1.5 volt divided by 1.5 ohm gives us 1 amp. So what we have here, guys, is three quarters of an amp through resistor one, one quarter of an amp through resistor two, and one full amp through resistor three. Now, those branch currents have all been determined. If you're using color pencils at your house to do this, go ahead and mark a different color for each branch, and then a different color altogether for the total current. Now, what about this second part? That's total current. If you'll remember what we did with parallel circuits the last two episodes, we added the currents together and the branches to get the total. So what's 0 0.75, 0 0.25, and 1? That's 2 amps. 2 amps total. So far, so good, guys. This next section asks for voltage. Now, I have them equal to each other. This is my hint to you guys to know that no matter what we do, the voltage between A and B, point A and point B, is going to be the same. It's the same across all branches. There's only one resistor in each branch. And voltage AB is the same thing as voltage across R1. Voltage AB is the same thing as voltage across R2. And voltage AB is the same thing as voltage across R3. And because they're the same as the total, guys, we can just enter 
1.5 volts right there. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. The next two things are power. Power of resistor one and power consumed or dissipated by resistor three. So how are we going to do that exactly? Remember back to our stuff before. Current times voltage is one way of finding power. In this case, it's a good way. If we could just take the current through the bulb and multiply by the voltage of the bulbs, we should be able to get power we want. Current through resistor one was three quarters of an amp, 0.75. The voltage was 1.5. So if we multiply 1.5 by 0.75, we should get 1.125. Resistor three, that's a 1.5. Oh, did I get this wrong? Power of resistor one is two ohms. Yeah, but it was 0.75 ohms. That's correct. Power of resistor three, current through resistor three was one amp. The voltage was 1.5 volts. Therefore, one amp times 1.5 volts. Volts are solid for us. It's watts. Remember, current times voltage give us power in watts. Lastly, resistor total. Now we could do this two ways, but I'm going to show you both. We could apply Ohm's law to the total. So total voltage divided by total current. You'll notice our total current is 0.52 amps and the voltage was 1.5 volts. Therefore, 1.5 volts divided by 2 amps give us 0.75 ohms, 3 quarters of an ohm. Okay, now I'm going to show you something a little bit different, and I'm going to need a little room here. So I'm going to move these stones and show you that shortcut I used a bit before. Let's do that now. Okay, guys, let's look at this from a different perspective. If I want to take this and I want to combine that shortcut, R total. Now I'm going to use R1 and R2. Remember, this is my four amp in middle there. And that's down on top, adding on mine. And resistors one and two. It's two ohms times 6 ohms over 2 ohms plus 6 ohms. So 12 ohms squared over 8 ohms. One of those ohms cancels and I get 1.5 ohms. So if I took these two resistors out of the circuit and replaced them with one equivalent resistor, that resistor would be a 1.5 ohm resistor. That's what equivalent resistor is. This is not total, this is equivalent. It's equivalent of the first two. Remember, I didn't include the third, so I'm going to do it again. This time I'm going to say R total. R equivalent times R total over R equivalent plus R total. So I'm going to take the 1.5 ohms times 1.5 ohms over 1.5 ohms plus 1.5 ohms. 2.25 ohms squared over 3 ohms. 2.25 ohms squared divided by 3 ohms is exactly 0.75 ohms. It works both ways. Now, I'll always be, if I were you guys, I'd go through that a couple times to make sure you have it. Okay? All right, let me show you the simulation back. Okay, guys, you're looking at an open screen with the FET simulation uh, dashboard up. Now, if I just go to simulations and I hit physics, 
this is what I'm going to find. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you which one I'd like you to use. This one right here. No, that's charges and fields. This one right here below it. Circuit construction and DC only. So I'm going to click that. And I can play or I can download. I'm just going to hit play just for a minute. So my simulation can play. Now, I'm not going to choose the intro. I'm just going to go to the lab. And this screen pops up. Now you can see on the left side here, I've got a wire, I've got batteries, I've got a light bulb, I've got a resistor, and I have a switch. What I can do is I can just click and drag. So for this one, I'm going to click and drag the battery over. I'm going to leave that there. Then I'm going to click wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire. Oops. Click a wire. Let's drag that. Oops. Okay, now I'm going to take a, let's take a light bulb. Got that hooked up. Then I need another need wire. Click my wire. Oops. Hook it to this part. And then I'm going to take that back up here. I'm just making a circuit here. Not very well. I'm going to click another wire just to get me another direction. And then I'm going to take one more wire. Click it there. Hook those together. And then you can see that I've got a circuit and it looks like my light is on. And they show those electrons going in the circuit. Now, if I wanted to click some measuring tools, I could do that too. So, I can go over here, and I can take my voltmeter. And I can measure my voltmeter. Now, I'm going to put one here, and the other one there. And I can get 9 volts, or negative 9 volts. So, you can see that it's a pretty easy system to work with. We're going to use this simulation for two labs in a row, so make sure you get a chance to play around with it. I've obviously showed you just the basics. There's a few things I want you to look at in the lab, and have some fun with it, guys. And when you're done with that activity, just upload it to Classroom, and you'll be done for the day. After this, you can take a few days to do this if you want to. And we'll, uh, and we'll get back on uh, track next time for uh, compound circuits. Let's go to the wrap-up. Okay, guys, now just to wrap up today, we have only a few things this week for you guys to do. Google Form on Parallel Circuits, it's just three questions. The lab that we have that I just showed you how to do to access, to access the simulations. And then we'll do a Friday Google Quiz. But make sure you guys are getting along okay. If you have any problems, get to the Google Meets or email me questions and I'll address them in the next video cast. Hope you guys are doing okay. Take it easy, and then tomorrow we'll start compound circuits. By the way, compound circuits will not be on Friday's Google Quiz. Simply parallel and series circuits. We'll save the compound stuff for next week. It's a little bit more complicated. Okay, guys, take it easy. We'll see you then.